Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to the Best Darn Diddly Review Show. This is a weekly podcast for anyone who loves The Simpsons, or ever has loved The Simpsons, hosted by two dudes that grew up on The Simpsons. My name is Miles, better known as Mr. Most Days Off, uh, and today you might be able to see that we're doing things a little different. For one, there is no review. It is our Season 10 Finale Spectacular. Spectacular! And there it is, joining me as always, your co-host with the most, Richie the Wizkid. How you doing today, Rich? I am presentable. Let's just put it that way. So I, I'm feeling good today. This one is, uh, I'm excited to see what you pick on this one. So I know everyone always looks forward to the top five, bottom one. And uh, we talked about it a little bit without revealing our answers to each other last night. So I'm excited to see where we go here. Yeah, uh, it was kind of a weird season for the top five, bottom one in a lot of ways. Like I didn't feel the same um like normal reservations that I normally have when I'm mm-hmm. or like <clears throat> even anxieties, you might even say. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm curious to hear. I, I think I say this every season and I'm always wrong, but I feel like this season it's going to be the most different top five that we've had so far. I feel like we're going to have the same top five in this one. I <laughs> that's, that's how it has always turned out. So, I mean, like if history repeats itself, you're probably right. I told you and to let anybody else listening and watching know, like I literally scrolled through all the episodes and wrote down different ones I thought could be in my top five. And through my first go through, I had exactly five written down. So I was like, well, let me double check just to make sure these are the ones that I want. And there might've been one or two I could have possibly put in there, but I, I feel like overall my first pick of the first five nailed that I just had to pick the order. But we're getting fair. ahead of ourselves. We're getting ahead of ourselves here. I, I had about seven or eight it looks like written down um i will say that this time the the bottom one i i don't hate the episode by any means but it was also really easy for me to pick i don't know if that tells you any insight into what you think it'll be you'll you'll probably guess it but uh before we get to that why don't we start by talking about some of this uh change in that is occurring here uh Mm. i actually thought that uh change had like several uh meaningful impacts or like meaningful like connections to this episode because this is our finale spectacular so we're gonna recap season 10 spectacular uh we're gonna recap season 10 we're gonna talk about season 11 we're going to do our top five bottom one you have a segment i can't remember what it is for this season i know it's uh with mike scully taking over as showrunner you changed it to a, a new theme i guess we'll say well, I changed it from what it was even in the last season finale, Spectacular. But I, we like the direction that I picked for this, so that's what we're going to go with. Okay. Well, why don't we talk about the changing stuff, then we'll do uh, that, and then we'll do our top five. So as far as the changing goes, I thought of three major ways that, in my opinion, change is going to like uh, connect to this episode. That's uh, one, uh, we briefly touched on it during the season, but... Uh, technology is doing some weird things where it's aging in the Simpsons world. So it's changing, uh, even though the Simpsons are not, because we know they stay, Mm -hmm. you know, relatively the same uh, for the most part. Uh, I also thought, though, that brought up, uh, especially in like two or three episodes, like in a row, it felt like uh, some aspects of dealing with dated humor, specifically uh, transphobia came up quite a bit, or transphobic jokes, I would say, came up a couple of times during out, uh, during the seasons. Uh, I, I think just, you know, like everybody always talks about like it was a different time or whatever, but it's interesting in this podcast just to, uh, uh, you know, reflect on that. We can talk a little more on that. And then, of course, our format is going to change moving forward as well. But uh, let's back it up, Rich. What do you think about technology changes in The, in the Simpsons? How do you feel about uh, that going into season 10? I mean – We talked about it in our last podcast, but even in the first episode, when you have Lisa Kudrow's character with the cell phone, like where she's walking around with this big cell phone and it's just, it's Uh, weird. Lisa Kudrow played uh, Lisa in that episode, if I recall. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, going on. But yeah, it's just, uh, it's a little off-putting the first time you see it. And like anybody watching from today, they'd be like, well, why haven't they seen it even sooner? But it's, it's crazy to think about how the characters have to, 
both change with the times, but stay the same. So that they're the same characters we know and love. And I think it's going to be more off putting the further down the road we get. Like, I think as we go forward, it's going to be weird to start like eventually seeing Bart have like a tablet. And then, like, that's just going to be like, uh, how do you get comedy out of this? And I'm sure they'll pull it off, but it, it's going to be very, very interesting to, uh, to see how that stuff plays out. I know, like I saw the episode where he was playing that uh, like a MOBA game where he was like actually winning and doing well. And it was just like, it was weird to see him in that. Oh kind yeah. Of... Yeah. That was like one of the most recent seasons. Yes. And yeah. it was, uh, it was very weird to see him in that kind of light. Cause I'm like, I, I don't really picture him as that kind of person, but like, there's going to be an episode a few seasons down the road, even where he's playing an online RPG, like an MMO with Marge kind of at points too. So it's, and I know that's, well, that is technology. So that counts, but like, it's just, it's kind of off putting, but at the same mm-hmm. time, I'm glad they will explore stuff like that. I mean, you look I mean, at shows they, like, they have to, right? Yeah. Like they don't, really, they don't really have a choice in the matter. They can't just ignore uh, smartphones if they want to stay even remotely relevant or cell phones. They're not even two smartphones yet. I mean, we'll have an episode next season where we'll be in the future with the. I assume was it the holograph phones? I haven't watched it in mm-hmm. years, so it's been a while. Yeah, Bart, uh, Bart to the future. It's yeah, I'm looking forward to that yeah. one. Same, same. Yeah, uh, you know, you brought it up the cell phone uh, in the very first episode. I think probably the even bigger, uh, like, more just in your face, I, I'll say, is when they go to the internet cafe. Like, that's mm-hmm. that's like a very dated, weird technology joke. Uh, but yeah, I it, it's weird to see just because it is, it's so glaringly obvious. Like, that's the problem with it. When you do have this, like, family that doesn't change at all, Um it is just, it feels like it's smacking you in the face whenever you see these items just suddenly appear into the universe. Uh, you mentioned the smartphones. Uh, and you know what? That actually, like tablets and smartphones, doesn't like that in some ways, like wouldn't that completely eliminate the idea of prank calling? Like, I don't know if that's even like in the age of smartphones, could you could you call Mo the bartender and, you know... Uh, ask for uh you know i i want a tinkle or whatever i mean you could you just have to block the incoming number remember when we first had cell phones people used to do that so you would call your friend and they wouldn't know it was you friends no <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh i guess but it, it just feels a little bit less anonymous i guess like in yep. that i think is the like uh, the whole thing with uh prank phone calls is staying anonymous i mean that was the whole deal when you were kids and like literally if it got too hot, you just, you know, hang the phone up and everything was cool again until you know, star 69 yeah. or 67 <laughs> came out and you're just like, what you hang up, the phone immediately rings and you're like, <gasps> mm-hmm. burn, well, it, I, burn it with fire. I guess Bart could start sending uh, letters in the mail in a sequential order of a joke. So, yeah. Uh, what's like the next, like it, so we just hit, like, we just saw cell phones. We've just seen home internet or internet cafes really. Uh, what do you think is going to be the next jarring technology that we see in like season 11 or 12 or 13 or whatever? Like what, what's, our, what's going to come across in the cartoon and we're going to be like, Whoa, that's kind of weird. Uh, if they're streaming an episode of the Simpsons on Disney plus. <laughs> comes comes all the way back around. No, yeah. like they, where they call it early, basically. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, like they predict streaming, and yeah, yeah, they call yeah. It, I got you. And the the ownership by Disney. Yeah, no, that's a that's a prediction. I I mean, like a technological <laughs> like mind bender. I I don't know. The smartphones are such a like. All that seems like the industry. obvious choice, right? Like it, it's just they control our lives so much, and like. Mm-hmm. From a technology standpoint, besides that, I guess maybe like VR, but like I, you can't really spend much time on on doing that. So, I would say maybe like we're gonna see like maybe uh, something like Napster or like just like the MP3 hype in general would be yeah. something that would like potentially start to be thematic even up- upon like I, I don't know that doesn't really My seem space. like something to come up uh, come up a lot in The Simpsons though, so maybe not. Yeah, maybe social media would be another one, but uh, I think smartphones would probably be the next like obvious technological choice. Yeah, well, yeah, because we just got cell phones going already, so that's yeah. In- so uh, again, super dated, like an internet cafe, but I, I can think of two very specific examples 
Uh, three very specific examples uh, where, again, it was kind of like I would say, I would consider it by today's standards for sure. It'd be uh, considered a transphobic joke. Um, what do you think? Like, we've come across a few things where they they say just some things that feel a little bit like, oh, that's uncomfortable to read in the script. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts on that? Are we going to see more of that or less of that as we round into the early 2000s? I definitely think we'll see more of that. I think that's just... I don't want to use the phrasing the style at the time. But <laughs> like, like an onion on your belt. Yeah, but like that's it's just perfect with racism or homophobia. <laughs> yeah. It's just, uh, I mean, if you're looking at the time those episodes were airing, that's, they're doing it as like a one-off joke where like when you see it at the time, you're, you're laughing. Oh yeah, that's funny. But like in today's standards, it's, it very much felt uncomfortable. And like we had to read, well, we didn't have to read the lines in the script, but we, Approach the we, subject. We chose to read the lines as they were written, as long as yeah. it's uh, so far. I mean, I'm not saying that's like a ground rule. If we get to a point where, I mean, like if the Simpsons got real weird and threw out some slurs at some point, I'm I'm probably going to choose to avoid those. But yeah, as of now, we're reading it with context. Yeah, yeah, and we talk about it too. So I, I feel like we handled that in a very good light and talked about it. And uh, you know, it's it's not, let's not hurt ourselves, patting ourselves on the back here. Well, <laughs> I, was, the I, was, the I was about to turn the corner there, but you interrupted me, and now I lost my train of thought. So <laughs> sorry. It's just like it, it's when you're reading the line and you're talking about it, you feel bad, and it makes you feel terrible. And again. I feel like I had this very poignant moment in my brain, but I totally lost the thought. That's when you talk with Miles, it, it happens constantly. So you just gotta. It's true. It's I'm true. just gonna sit back and uh, just let him keep talking here. Go ahead, Miles. Oh no, no, let it pop back into your mind. It, it interrupt whenever it does. I'm sure it'll happen. <laughs> I'm sure it'll happen. Well, how do you uh, feel about it? I, I agree. I think that we're probably going to see more uh, of it than less of it. I think it'll get to a point where because we're we're gaining on you know, our own timeline, essentially, yeah. it'll eventually even add on our podcast at least. And then we can be embarrassed about the stuff that we did in 2020 and 2040 or whatever. Oh, we're like, screwed. We'll be around. Uh, yeah. I'm not too worried about that. It's <laughs> the world's ending. It's fine. Um, part or li live like there's no tomorrow. It takes on a whole lot of new meaning in 2020, but uh, no, I, I definitely think we're going to see more of it for a little while. I think it's uh I don't know if important is the right word. Maybe that's correct usage. I don't know. I think it is a good thing though, to kind of reflect on that just because uh, for, I know both of us and I think a lot of our listeners, the Simpsons was an impactful part of the formation of our sense of humor. Uh, yes. And just as we grow into like the world that is in 2020, I think it's important to reflect on some of the things that, you know, like we probably joked about in 1999 that like, it's like, Oh no, that was super shitty. Like we were definitely mm -hmm. punching down at gay people when, you know, we called people homophobic slurs essentially in a derogatory fashion. Uh, and then, you know, I think that there can be some uh, therapeutic or some just self uh, growth aspects of reflecting on a show like the Simpsons that, uh, or, or, you know, it doesn't have to be the Simpsons, but for us personally, it happens to work. And also that's what our podcast is about. So, it, you know, fits the narrative, but uh, you know, I, I think it's just anything that you can look back on and kind of see is almost like a time capsule Time capsules carry things that were good about the past and they carry things that were not so good about the past. And I think that's kind of a unique thing that we're getting to experience uh, here this season more than we had in the the past. And that's not to say that I, I just said The Simpsons is getting bad. That's not what I mean at all. I still think the show is great, but I well, think you know what I mean there. I mean, it's not even the first time The Simpsons have possibly cross the line like that either because if you look back in the yeah. earlier seasons how many jokes about suicide were in the first couple seasons where we were like oh that doesn't track as well today as it did back when those jokes were first on the show so like i mean it's when society changes you have to change so we're still and a few I, years away from that on the show and once it happens you know they'll take the high road and stop doing that kind of stuff and I, I do still stand by that, like, anything can be funny if it's handled mm -hmm. in the right manner. So I'm not telling people not to joke about, you know, any any of these things that we're talking about today. But uh, uh, I do think that, you know, you should probably be careful um, 
the you know you're you're writing with nuance in that case or you're using them with nuance in that case because otherwise you might end up the subject of like oh man how shitty were people in you know 2020 or whatever especially when we are recording ourselves talking about stuff that can be accessed forevermore online yeah man it happens all the time for mm-hmm. sure uh we choose oh, to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah for real yeah i mean at best i did leave while you're at it um yeah so i think that's uh enough on that but i do think we are going to see more of it and we'll have to continue to just kind of address like oh man yeah 2003 we were kind of mean to people or whatever the case uh might be when we get to those to those moments but uh the other i think more very obvious at least on this particular episode uh if anybody actually tunes in especially for our regular uh listeners of the show uh you can see us (laughs) which is weird it's not normal (laughs) richie's like what um yeah like we didn't actually spend a good you know 15 minutes before we started getting all this ready and I, i i do this for other stuff but uh uh, yeah, so we're on Get Vocal right now. This will also be on YouTube. Uh, we'll still have the like audio podcast only if you just want to hear us talk about The Simpsons. Uh, but moving forward, we are going to start recording in this manner. At least we're gonna we're gonna demo with it for a little bit. Uh, we're working. Uh, I'm I'm doing a beta test right now. Um, I was doing the Mister Most Days Off Loves everything on Get Vocal, but now we're gonna bring Best Darn Diddly over here. See if we can make that work out due to this format. Uh, It is going to get weird on the scheduling because like this episode is technically the finale, which will come out at the end of season 10. But if you're like one of our regular podcast listeners, I think that I don't even know. I'll have to look real quick. What episode just came out in season 10? Was it um, mom and pop art or the old man and the sea student possibly? Yeah, we're, we're like we're usually about four weeks ahead on when we record to when it comes out so if you're watching this right now then you would be like four weeks ahead on our podcast or maybe you're a time traveler like bart it could be but yeah like this episode will still the audio version of this will still go up on podbean like in our normal website uh after 30 minutes over tokyo air so uh but that's not the only thing um Richie, be honest, 100% open, honest, it's okay. Uh, This is a safe space, as the kids like to say. Um, We've talked about The Simpsons for 10 seasons, uh, over four years. We have not missed missed a week. (laughs) I know what you're going to ask me. (laughs) We have not missed a a week. Um, Are you, are you even at all tired about talking about The Simpsons? Yeah, there's some weeks where I'm like, why can't I just watch an episode without having to look at it with that mind of like wanting to review it? But the thing is, I know like if I just watched it on my own without taking notes, I'd internally be doing that regardless. So it's like you already do that. What's the like you're making it be bigger in your head than it actually is. (laughs) It's a, no, it's a commitment. I mean, like I said, oh, yeah. four years, uh, a, a lot of weeks at this point. What is it? Uh, 200 and I want to say this is going to be our 224th or possibly 225th week at this point. Uh, oh, and hey, our first uh, live viewer jumping in with us, Bob's on the on the show. That's going to be another new aspect that we might theoretically have people interact with us uh during a recording of an episode, which is going to be something we've never encountered before. Oh yeah. If you want me to be the, uh, the chat man, I'm going to have to start pulling it up on my phone. So I can't see the He's laptop. The chat so man. Like a Bob just said something. I can't read that from where I'm sitting. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get like all of them. Then why are you wearing your glasses? Cause I was like, dude, your glasses are glaring, uh, but you need them to see, but you just basically told me that you can't see anyway. So what's it's- the point? If the if the get vocal screens were black, I might have a better chance at reading that. But like, okay, it's so well, I'm supposed to be doing this beta test thing. I will give them note that we need a a, a night option, night mode, yes, uh, for the chat screen. And uh, thank you, Bob. You said congratulations on the season grind. Yeah, dude. Uh, I'm gonna repeat it, and it sucks for the listeners on the regular show. But whatever, dude. You just got here, and I'm happy to have you. Uh, we're changing the format slightly. So if you didn't hear, like new episodes are actually going to start coming out here. Uh, And then I don't know if we're going to like catch up the gap or if we're going to shorten the gap or if there's going to, there's still going to be some separation of when the episode reviews here versus when the episode reviews uh, uh, or yeah, just because the audio only. One of the things I'm most, 
Go ahead. We'll always have a new recording every week, audio wise, but we might not always have a visual. Like if we take a week off, we're not going to have a get vocal that week. Possibly, yeah. We'll have or to work out just, the details on that. Or you yeah. just lined us up to always have to do one every single week live. Yeah, I actually gave you. I, I was just about to tell you how you're going to get a break, but uh, instead, <laughs> I'm, I'm giving you a bigger commitment. You're right. That's how it works. Uh, we're getting back to that. I did want to say my screen is or my background is just a green screen, and that's because we will actually be getting uh, green screen capabilities to start playing with as well, which could uh, could be fun. Uh, if you have any visual aids you wanna wanna use during the show, we'll be able to actually do that. And then you can like you can like weather person where you like point to the thing on your screen and and demo it. But I actually uh, already have my green screen up right now, and I picked the most boring background ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you actually took a picture of your wall, put a green screen up, and then made the background the picture of your wall. That's, Absolutely. Mm, Absolutely. That's a very Abed thing. Hmm, Abed, I brought that up for a specific reason. You can't but... take the one thing I was going to mention away from this part. <laughs> You're like, make a list, and I was like, eh, it's just going to be the it's one It's just going to be the one. I told but... you specifically not TV, too, so that's perfect. Did you? I don't remember that part. I did. It's okay. You were really into the double XP weekend of Call yeah. of Duty. Oh, when you um, all right, so you're tired <laughs> of talking about The Simpsons week after week. I don't know that I'd use the word I'm tired of it, but I was also really enjoying talking about other things. Yeah. On Mr. Most Days Off Loves Everything, where I would just nerd out about random topics. Bob's been on the show, actually, uh, more than once. Uh, it was a great time. And uh, so what we've decided to do is kind of blend those ideas. And that means starting, like, next week here, but in a few weeks on the audio show, uh, we will be doing an alternation of Best Darn Diddly and Best Darn Everything, which is essentially going to be a ripoff of my other show, Mr. Most Days Off Loves Everything. But now, name now. now with <laughs> Richie the Wiz Kid also able to join in on the fun because uh, he doesn't have the work conflict with the time slot that we're no longer tied to. So, yay. <laughs> so you're basically saying if we can record whenever we want to. <laughs> mm-hmm. What's up? Yeah, yeah, we're just going to throw that diddly bully weight around. Like, oh, no, yeah. if you want our dozen and a half listeners, you're going to have to make some amends for our uh, our requirements. We have a writer. Richie's going to need a fridge full of Diet Cokes. Mm-hmm. We I also – every, uh, everyone loves the diddly, man. Everyone <laughs> wants it. And uh, if you want to sponsor us, we can do an episode about it. Diet Coke right there. Oh, hey, that's an, a fun idea. But, no, like uh, – that, that really is a great idea. Uh, <laughs> no pin that, but uh, we, we will sell out week one, y'all. Like whatever you want us to talk about, we'll love that thing. I feel like uh, I could but, talk about Diet Coke for an hour at least. I'd be curious to see you try. So I'm in. <laughs> uh, but that's kind of the point. The The whole best darn everything is going to be essentially the best darn diddly treatment. But instead of talking about The Simpsons, uh, we might not even talk about TV. Now, we're going to talk about TV a lot because we both love TV and movies and uh, video games, other forms of entertainment. But uh, uh, it might not always be television related. It's going to just be literally anything that we're either already a fan of, interested in becoming a fan of, or we might just find really cool guests that they have something cool to talk about. Perfect example uh, Bob and I talked about uh, Universal Studios theme parks, uh, and that was a really fun conversation. You can still check it out on my YouTube page. Uh, and now we'll have that opportunity for Richie and I to talk with these cool people or each other about other things outside of the Simpsons universe that we love. Except wrestling. <laughs> we might have to talk about a little wrestling, dude. Like, there's, oh Wrestling's gosh. probably going to come up. It's just a lot of the people I know really like it. Do you know why... The Rock's family got tested for COVID nineteen. Oh my God! Is this one of your your dad jokes? I need to know if I what The Rock was cooking. Nice. Yeah, I could have nice. done a Delorean one, Delorean one earlier when you talked about time travel. It's you should it's, have Delorean. I got a Delorean that's used. Well, it's only been used for time to time. Ah. Uh... I see what you did there. Uh, I think I sent you a picture of it. I just found a beer called DeLorean Dust IPA, and I really want to try it, mostly because the can art looks amazing. Um, Yeah, Bob points out it's almost Royal Rumble season, Richie, so that's like the one event of the year that is actually worth talking about uh, right now in the WWE. Every time there's like a match, like it's worth talking about this. 
I legit haven't watched a WWE match since WrestleMania. I've, I have been watching AEW, but that's different. Completely. I, that's a completely different thing. Like, don't be crazy. Every time I like click on Twitter, it just seems like there's tons of people complaining about the decline of wrestling. And I'm like, well, then why are you guys still watching? They're going to keep making it. If you keep watching. It's like uh, cow- because people love bitching about wrestling more than they love wrestling. That's the absolute right. truth, especially on Twitter. That. That is the absolute, uh, and Richie's following the wrong people. Like our, like Bob and our, like our friendship, like started in a group of like Twitter wrestling fans who all happen to podcast on various subjects, and like we were like we were were looking like. (laughs) (laughs) See, they're all very positive wrestling fans. Like you're not even on like the dark side of wrestling Twitter. Like that's a whole different thing. Terrible. The dark side of Twitter is like the dark side of the ring series, but just for social media. But these are the types of things, uh, you know, that we're going to be able to dive deeper into. But Richie, since you don't want to talk about wrestling, what are some of the things that you are excited to talk about other than the Simpsons? Well, you already hinted at, we know we're going to do at least one episode about community. Um, And if we, if it can't be TV related, then we could out outsource that idea to like maybe Dan Harmon or something and talk about all of his works in general. Uh, it definitely I mean, can be TV related. I'm just saying it doesn't have to be. I mean, hell we could talk about volleyball because we freaking love volleyball and we play that all the time where we used to. It's had a good. fun episode where uh, Toby and a friend of mine named Hong Dung uh, had uh, on for a talk about skateboarding, which was yeah. really fun. So yeah, it's uh volleyball is definitely in that, in that, available net i guess you'd say i'll be honest i uh i've gotten really really addicted to survivor this last week and i would love to talk about survivor with some people so uh maybe we could even make that happen i know you love reality tv in general but you usually like like the really trashy dating reality tv me and your wife watched like two reality shows when we were before you guys were married when we were all roommates for like two seasons and he hasn't let me live it down since you and I used to watch. You, you're basically a uh, Tila tequila super fan, dude. Like that's uh that's I, I mean, the, I if you shifted your camera to the Nazi, 30 so degrees to the left, you would have a poster of her right there. I am almost positive. Uh, and that, but that rock of love show too. We watched a lot. Diabetes. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> but no down with Tila now she's, she's trash now. I mean, yeah, was, I, I heard actually. I but, think, uh, like she wasn't always. I have not watched a reality TV show since like Pawn Stars, and apparently they're all trash on that show too. Okay, so I don't know why, but they just added Survivor season twenty and twenty eight to Netflix, and I binged both of them. And now I'm like looking like they've got me hooked. I want the rest of the goods. Dude, I watched The Unicorn a few weeks ago on Netflix, that like little TV show, and I thought that was pretty enjoyable. So there's plenty on Netflix to talk about alone. Interesting. But, uh, Interesting. Once again, Miles rambled, and I forgot I had another idea of something we could talk I could talk about. We could tie it to The Simpsons working in a factory that deals with boxes. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that'll be our most boring episode ever. <laughs> I don't know. There's lots of drama at work. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, those are the types of things. We're still going to be cruising through <laughs> those, are the, types things those the types of things we're going to talk about. Richie's drama at work. Uh, so those are the types of things we're going to talk about. We'll still be doing The Simpsons every other week, so we'll still be cruising through season 11 uh, starting up very soon. And uh, we're going to get to uh, talk about some of the episodes and other things just specifically from season 11. Uh, that we're going to be getting to. There's one that I actually realized today uh, that I was I, I I realized while we were playing Rocket League actually before uh, before we started talking here, and I purposely kept my mouth shut because I wanted to talk about it on this. So uh, we're going to get to that. Uh, but before we do, Rich, it's your time to shine. Uh, season nine, we started something with Mike Scully season. You've now changed it to something different, apparently. Uh, but you've got a segment. What is it? Talk about it. Let's uh, let's discuss Richie's thoughts. This is – we're going to talk – I brought it up in the podcast like on a weekly basis where there's like stuff from season 10. I didn't remember it was from season 10, and it's stuff that I've been using in everyday life for like my whole life and just didn't realize how much of it came from this season. And when you reflect on the show, you know, everyone does the seasons three through eight and stuff like that, but like – Overall, there's still a lot of good material in season 10. There are a lot of great episodes in season 10. So this is season 10 in everyday life. 
So we're going to talk about stuff that we use and when people talk to you and then you respond with the Simpsons line and, and they just give you that weird look like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And then you put your head down in shame and walk away or you just go Simpsons did it. The first one, <laughs> like Mayor to the mob was the first one that came to my mind when the, when the guards are laying outside and they do that. Is there anything fluffier than a cloud? If there is, I don't want to know about it. And like, Throw that in the random conversations. People will give you really weird looks, but it works in every social situation. Like you just bring that up. <laughs> it's stuff that I've used my entire life. Uh, other ones like wild barts can't be broken when they're, uh, when they're watching the trailer for the movie and then they actually watch the movie the, and they say, we know all your secrets. Like whenever somebody tells me something they're like, Oh no, I wasn't supposed to tell you that. That's literally how I respond. <laughs> Gets me weird looks every time, but it works in every situation when they get, when they uh, give you a secret Homer to the max. Uh, whenever like work is done a lot of the time when it's been a long day or when someone does something stupid, I will literally go and that's the end of that chapter, chapter. and throw a scarf yeah. over. Like, I do that all the time. That's a like, huge one. Yeah, like there's there's just there's so many great things from the season, and I won't I even like the I'm with Cupid like the prayer that Apu does before they eat good rice, good curry, good gandhi, let's hurry. I've used that one numerous times in my life too. People don't know uh, why. Probably I talk. this, yeah, that's that's a killer at Thanksgiving. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> and then uh, there was one more that I wanted to talk about. It's the one I use more than all of them, and it's Monty can't buy me love when comic book guy drives by the Simpsons walking and yells, get a horse. I use that one <laughs> on a daily basis. I get to drive a golf cart at work and it's a really long walk from like the, the admin building out to your workstation. And if I drive by somebody I know and they're walking, I will stick my head out the window and yell, get a horse and then drive past them. What an ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's when I'm driving a tug too. And it's just uh yeah. I mean, there's just so many great lines from this season that I had no idea that all the stuff I use in everyday life were from this season. And I just what, think that that shows a lot of uh, a promise and, and good writing. One that I can add on, I, I didn't prep for this list, but uh, since you brought up those, uh, from mom and pop art, anytime I see any anything in like French or Spanish that, you know, yep. sounds like Le Grill, it's like, Le Grill, what the hell is that? I have that one written down as well. I just didn't yeah. want to overkill it on this, but yep. And I believe is this also the season where you get the uh, there's the right way, the wrong way, and the Homer Simpson way, and the, and the, ma the max power, the way. max power way. That's the yeah, the max power. There you go. Is that, that the wrong, wrong way? way? Yeah, yeah, but faster. faster. Yeah, yeah I yeah, use that as well. I didn't, even, I didn't even write that one down. Good job, Miles. There we go, man. Yeah, dude, those are all really. Uh, that's an interesting. Like, I mean, I think that we've we've had phrases in the first nine seasons for sure that could have made that list, but that's a very dense amount of common phrases that uh, all come from just this one season. Yep. I wrote down about eight to 10 and that's just stuff like off the top of my head. So like, and going back through my notes a little bit, but like, it's, it's a lot in this season. So I'm interested to see if that continues next year or not, or if it's uh, just a, an outlier on the blip of the Simpsons seasons. Yeah. Yeah, that will be interesting to see because, I mean, we're going to talk about season 11 here in a bit. Just peeking ahead, though, I don't by name recognize nearly as many episodes as I did yeah. looking ahead at season 10. Now, they could just be that the names are getting kind of obscure and such. But, uh, like, if I look at the description, I'm, I'm sure I've seen most, if not all, of these episodes. But uh, definitely starting to get that little bit more obscure uh, titles and whatnot. Uh, but we're going to get there in a minute. I think it's time, sir. Uh, you didn't really seem to struggle too much. In fact, you said you wrote down five episode titles and then just had to put them in order. I struggled a little bit more than you. Uh, let's go ahead and get to our top five, bottom one episode of the season. Uh, I'm going to start with my bottom one and just get it right out right away. Uh, I went with Lard of the Dance, the very first episode of the season. Uh, I don't hate the episode. I like the episode. I just felt that it was a little bit jarring of a transition for episodes, like in the past. Uh, it definitely did not feel seamless, like it was the same. There, there was just some like rough edges around it that I, I hmm. felt as I was watching that episode. And I remember having the thought, like, oh, is this going to be the season 
where I notice major changes in the Simpsons in a negative way. And that did not end up being the case, but uh, because of that jarring first hit, I chose Lard of the dance as my least favorite episode. Uh, Oh, also relatively boring. I mean, okay, but just like there are other better Barton Homer adventures than the getting lard. I thought that was just okay. <laughs> it was the getting lard of side stories. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Wow. Okay, so we will, we will be at least different today. I had two episodes written down for this one, uh, you know, because we talked without revealing the names. And I went back and forth between it. And then, like I told you last night, when I searched my heart, I knew the right answer. And for me, it was I'm with Cupid. Fair. I And even that one has lines that I use on a daily basis, like, you'll kill us both or or die trying. So it still has good moments. But, like, it was just, I don't know. It was just kind of boring to me. I don't know. I, I feel like I am a romantic at heart, and I like doing romantic things. But, like, it was just boring, man. Like, I, I don't know. That one, and then I, I also wrote down Simpson Bible stories just because – it's probably a lot of it because of the material. Yeah, so that's fair. Going back and forth between those two, but I, I picked I'm with Cupid as my least favorite. Those forced holiday episodes, uh, that I was going to bring yeah. up both of those, that you could you could tell that there was like a constraint on the writers that they didn't normally have. I, I would agree right. with you, but I also kind of like both of those. So uh, yeah, that's, right. that's a reasonable <laughs> answer though. Uh, how about your number five, sir? All right, I haven't looked at this list since last night. Uh, the Wizard of Evergreen Terrace was my number five. I just a lot of great moments, a lot of fun moments in that, a lot of memorable moments. Um, just, I mean, I feel like in this season in general, just to be in the top five is is a, I don't want to say honor. That's a, that's a terrible <laughs> phrasing, but it's it's an honor to be in the top five. The Simpsons season. writers should be so privileged to have your opinion. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that one, I'll tell you, is one of uh, what I consider to be two of the two huge episodes that just were on the outside looking in of my list. Um, my number five, I went with Doe in the Wind, uh, which was really? where, Rich, uh, so where Richie becomes a hippie. <laughs> I was looking at your beard when I said it. Uh, mm. When Homer becomes the hippie. I love the freakouts. I love the George Carlin uh, appearance on the show. Uh, it that one I'll be honest is fighting with two other episodes and it just edged itself in. But yeah, uh, huh. Doe in the Wind. Okay, maybe we are going to be different than I, like honestly that one. I didn't even think for a second it would be in my top five. So that's that's interesting to see how our minds. A good old different. fashioned hippie freak out, man. <laughs> Go freak out the squares. In Springfield Elementary. Uh, and then I do think this one will be on your list. We'll see if I'm correct. But my number four episode, I went with Mayor to the Mob. All right. That may or may not be in my top five. My number four episode was Homer to the Max. Okay. The Homer to the Max was the other uh, big episode that I felt was on the outside looking in. Um Tell you what, I'm going to tell you why I didn't put it, and then I want you to tell us why you did put it. But I chose not to go with Homer to the max, and it was partially uh, probably the how good the episode is is fault because I had built it up so much in my mind when we rewatched the episode. I was like, okay, it was good, but it wasn't as good as I remembered it to be, or it was just as good as I remembered it to be. It didn't like exceed my expectations like some of the other episodes did. Yeah, it's... Um... I've seen it more recently, I think, than you have just like on syndication or whatnot. So like I knew what I was getting out of it pretty much already. And I, I still think it's just a whole lot of fun. And like it's got a really stupid ending with him and changing Marge's names and like them ribbing her a little bit on that. And like I, I love the uh, the whole pepper spray thing where the, the cops are chasing Homer around the tree instead of just waiting for him to come around the other side. And it's there's just a lot of really stupid and funny moments like in the episode and uh the whole Homer being proud of his name and then instantly reviled by his name is just like a good bit. <laughs> I, I honestly feel like most of my top five for the first time ever is going to be like stuff that is, if you take a census of everybody, this is the, the ones they would all pick. Like I, yeah. usually, usually I've got one or two that I, I feel like are just feel special to me from that. But like, that is the one thing about the season is there's a lot of stuff that was like up here like this, just kind of going mm -hmm. back and forth. And it, yeah, I, I think that the across the board, it was a solid season, and most of the episodes were were could have easily been in contention, depending on you know 
what day I was looking at this list to some degree. I don't know if I need to say why I, I chose Mayor of the Mob. I think everybody that's I feel like that's one on the list that everybody is is probably going to put. It's got the great Mark Hamill guest star. Uh, Homer as a bodyguard is just really fun. I love Mayor Quimby in the episode. Uh, and like, really, I think, I think part of it is just because I, I, one of the things that we both enjoy doing, uh, especially pre COVID is going to like nerd conventions and that one takes place at a nerd convention. So that's, uh, that's fun in its own right. What about your number three, sir? My number three, and this is the one I was telling you last night where I was like, I wasn't sure I, my three, four and five, I didn't know what order I wanted them in. And when I was thinking of my number three compared to my number four, I couldn't determine which one I liked more. But when I compared my three to my five, I picked the three. And then when I compared my four to my five, uh, I thought I initially flipped those two. So if I was like, if that one's better than that one, then three has to be better than both of those by default. Number three, if you're still with me here on this train of thought, is mom <laughs> and pop art. I uh. I enjoy the story. I like the whole leg grill thing is still as funny as it was the first time I saw it. Um, the whole like – dialogue between marge and homer about homer taking over her dream but the thing that sold me on putting this in my top five is the ending and i talked about it on our podcast too i love the ending to that one i think it's very very sweet and artistic in like a simpson way and like it's not really a reset like they reset marge and homer but like the whole town's flooded but everyone's <laughs> yeah in- it's venice <laughs> uh wherever now yeah but i venice just thought it was a very, very sweet and, and thoughtful ending and I also think they just didn't know how to reset after that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, that's another big one that I, I, I omitted from my list. I'll be honest. I, uh, I, I, wow. thought, I thought that, that that one was obviously in contention, but uh, it just did not move me as much as this next episode. And I think this one is probably a surprise or probably won't be on your list. Maybe I'll be wrong. I went with Lisa gets an A at number three. Okay. I really love the uh, a, a huge part of it is the comptroller bit. Uh, just I absolutely love the whole thing with the fake comptroller. I love the like the whole town having to work together against Lisa, even though she is clearly morally right. And even when they think they have her convinced to just cheat and change, uh, take the money, they realize like, oh no, Lisa's too good of a person for that. So we're going to have to be sne- like even more sneaky to continue our original like sneakiness. I love all of that. And then also uh, Homer and Pinchy is such like, I, I, that might be like the ultimate B plot in a, a Simpsons episode ever. Like it's just such a uh, emotional arc that takes place in like four and a half minutes, but it's such a good four and a half minutes. You know, I completely forgot about the Pinchy episode in this one. So I'm, I'm glad that you gave him some recognition that he just was, he's gone. So he's gone in my brain too. That yummy, yummy goodness. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, so going with a Lisa episode, kind of for three is a little weird. I went with a really weird choice for number two, but it's, I honestly revisiting the episode, it hit me in a special way. Uh, it made me want to go back to there. Uh, I, it, it's a side character story. I went with Viva Ned Flanders. I, uh, I really love the team up of Ned and Homer, as we've talked yeah. about in the past, that leads to, uh, a lot of comedy that, most of the time we see those two characters at odds with each other. So in those rare moments, like uh, when they became best friends and had the nacho hat and stuff and like Ned has to be the one to break eventually. Uh, (laughs) But, but seeing those two on like a wild adventure in Las Vegas was just an absolute blast. And another one that I, I love the ending uh, and another one where I, I really enjoyed the guest. I had a great time talking to I thought Mikey B brought a lot of great insight to that episode. And I'm so sad that I had to edit the majority of uh, around that episode because he, his audio was missing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was one that was right outside my top five when I did my like second when I went back through. And I have a feeling that my number two might be your number one just because I feel like you really enjoyed it, but you haven't talked about it yet. I just want to say first, though, like I'm, I'm very, very proud of your list, Miles. I feel like yours is very, very thoughtful, and it makes me feel shameful about mine because I just went with all the ones that I like the most. <laughs> but like you put a lot of good thought into this list that's for the season finale. Spectacular. The first time I've ever done that. I messed it up. Uh, my number two episode – 
maximum homer drive. I just, it, it's such a fun story. Like it's got a lot of good moments. One of the ones on my list that I didn't talk about in the previous segment is I still will do like, he called me or he called me Greenhorn. I called him Tony Randall. It was a thing we had, which is the most obscure <laughs> Simpsons reference I will use in everyday life. Yeah. Definitely get looks for that one. But like, there, there's not this episode could be titled like Richie's Guide to Getting Strange Looks and like Awkward Silences. But episode fifty-seven. <laughs> <laughs> but like the episode's just fantastic. It's a lot of fun. The B story for being such a simple B plot is ridiculously funny at times too. Senor Ding Dong. Oh my God! Yes, yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, maximum homer or yeah, maximum homer drive number two episode. And you 100% predicted it. That is my number one episode. Uh, the real main reason that got the spot that it did is I was thinking, I was like reflecting on it and looking at how I felt preseason versus postseason. And mm -hmm. maximum Homer Drive and Homer to the Max, I had very level going into the season, like remembering, like, oh, I, I loved both of those episodes. They share the weirdness of having Max in the name, which is just like kind of an odd thing to have happened. Um, but whereas I said earlier, Homer to the max, it, it like met my expectations, but it didn't exceed them. Like I remember the trucker episode so fondly as a kid. I love the idea of the auto like driving trucks. I, I remember at one point thinking if that were real, that'd be my dream job. Like that'd be amazing. I hundred percent. I'll be a truck driver. Uh, you don't have to like, you know, be all uncomfortable and focused all day. That sounds great. Uh, but <laughs> This episode, when I rewatched it, uh, exceeded like more than Homer to the Max did. Very much so. Uh, I love the side character of Red. I love, uh, like you said, Senior Ding Dong uh, as such. Just a, a one of the most obscure B story, like kind of along with the Pinchy storyline. But this one was even more just out there. Uh, th wasn't Vincent Price part of that? Like, or am I? I was am I just thinking that, but that's. I think that's a different, isn't that? That's a different just a Super Bowl episode, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, like which also paired up Marge and, and Lisa. But regardless, Maximum Homer Drive, my number one of the season, which only leaves one final episode for you, sir. Um, it was in your top one. It's. I can't say enough about Mayor to the Mob. I I smile from start to finish the whole way through that episode. And when you add in the fact that I, I didn't realize this until we did it, but that Mark Hamill also does the drill sergeant voice. Yeah. That just puts it back up there. The whole fluffier than a cloud thing I've talked about already. Homer is a bodyguard and like how good he's trained at first. And I still think he was a great bodyguard for what it's worth until he threw the mayor out the window. But like <laughs> everything about that episode is just fun. Everything. And like you get to see more of all the, the mobsters too, which like, Man, you can't say enough. Just hearing people voice characters and like you can tell they're having fun doing it is just that, that makes it fun for the audience too. So I just, I always love Fat Tony moments. Like he's got to be such fun to play on a daily basis. And even Legs and uh, what's his face, the everyone who's the guy who was dancing was that Legs? I can't remember right now. Oh my gosh, my mind's failing me. But like all of them are just fun, man. And, and, the use the forks, like uh, <laughs> the forks, the forks, changing, changing guys and dolls so that he has to sing about being a Jedi. And he's complaining about it. Like be a Jedi tonight for Yoda while we serve our guest the soda, <laughs> do it for Chewie and all the other puppets. <laughs> be a Jedi tonight. Like that whole thing's just fun from start to finish. And I, I, I was my one and two, I was went back and forth on for about maybe five seconds, and then I did Mayor to the Mob. That's fair. I had a feeling that one was going to hit real high on your list, and it, it definitely was in, in consideration at the high end of mine as well. That's how it ended up in number three. Uh, but, uh, or four, excuse me. Four. I already fucked yeah. up my own list, but hey, whatever. <laughs> uh, dude, uh, so I think that we were both right. Our lists were a little different and a little the same. Like, they're kind of, I, I think there were, there was some crossover, but... Uh, Definitely had some some outliers on mine that I think uh, do, didn't quite line up with yours. I like that, though. If we were the same all the time, the show would be boring. I mean, I wouldn't get that far. I'm still a part of it. but no. uh, uh, All right, man. So that wraps up Season 10. Uh, or I guess, uh, yeah, we'll say Final Thoughts on Season 10. Uh, let's peek at 11 real quick. All right. Um, we do this every time. Just don't don't list every episode, dude. No, like, no, but we I can't. usually don't have the list even 
up. So you have to say like you didn't even look at the list. So this time I pulled the list up in advance. Oh uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just kind of peeking ahead right now. Uh, what are some of the episodes that immediately jump out at you, sir? There's one big one that I think we're both going to have on the top of our list, probably. Uh, Kill the Alligator and Run. I'm looking forward to seeing them go to the Wang of the U.S. on that. And then, <laughs> obviously, Bart to the Future. That's like, so appropriate because I think Bob, yeah, Bob's still on the, yeah. <laughs> <Bob> <laughs> <Florida>. <laughs> He's excited too. <laughs> But Bart to the Future, I'm very much looking forward to. Big one to. on my list, Bart to the Future. And like I, I'm I'm with you a little bit where like a lot of this stuff, I don't remember what it is until I pull up the synopsis. So I'm just not gonna pull up the synopsis so I will have fun watching again. But I believe Grift of the of the Magi, Magi is gonna be another one uh to That's watch. the Furby episode, I believe, and I'm very excited about that. That'll be a lot of fun. I'm sure you're excited for Treehouse of Horror. Of course, um, yeah, always. I almost don't even mention those on these, though, just because I feel like it's almost a given. I like even, like, the quote-unquote bad treehouses of horror. They're just fun. Yeah, I mean, they're they're fun. I just I, – they'll never be on my top list. I don't know what's wrong with me. But the okay. first episode, Beyond Blunderdome, I'm really looking forward to that one, especially with, like, the context of – isn't that the Mel Gibson one, how Mel Gibson's – uh, yes, yeah. Does, isn't it where he's like asking Homer for advice on how to make his movies better or something like that? Yeah, yeah how much people go back and forth on Mel Gibson these days. I think it's going to be this, very This was pre-Passion of the Christ, I do believe. Oh, yeah, by a long shot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so those are all on my list as well. The big one I thought that we'd both for sure have is E-I-E-I, -E uh, where they start selling to Mako. Oh, okay. See, I just didn't even remember what it was. Gotcha. Uh, and then the other one uh, that I am personally excited about, let me see if I can find it, is a lapse, uh, Last Tap Dance in Springfield. I don't know why, but that's another least episode that just like the tapa 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 uh, sticks in my head all the time. And tapa 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 is something that I actually use anytime like somebody's like struggling to like stay in rhythm with anything. I will say yeah. that to them like tapa tapa tapa. Um, another like a life thing that you mm -hmm. use from the Simpsons. You can you can mark that down for your, for next season's finale when we get there. Uh, but there's also one other episode that I'm gonna go ahead and talk about. I'm gonna take a little bit of a, a leap here because uh, with the best darn everything going in between, I'll now have 20 weeks to to figure out how I'm gonna make this work. Uh, I gotta lean in and see what Bob said this time. <gasps> <laughs> so uh, <laughs> the episode, uh, season eleven, episode ten, little big mom has a special connection to one of our former guests who I still stay in contact with uh, from time to time. Uh, little big mom is the first episode that Carolyn Omine ever wrote, and whenever we last spoke, uh, she unfortunately had to turn me down for another. Uh, thing I asked her to do, but she said that she would absolutely love to come back and talk about her first episode. So fingers crossed, I'm going to reach out to her. I'm going to start hoping that we can schedule uh, and make that timing out uh, so that we can hopefully have her back on the show. Still current Simpsons writer, uh, Carolyn Omine to talk about her first episode. I, I can't guarantee anything, but I will do my absolute best uh, to try to make that happen so that we can have that uh, that really uh, exciting conversation. I think that'd be a lot of fun. That would be a first for us because we've talked to a lot of Simpsons writers at this point, and it's been a great experience. Super grateful for each and every one of them to, to give us their time. But this would be the first time that we ever got to talk to a Simpsons writer about their very first time writing for the show. And their actual script. And I like, if you've noticed, I'm sure you've noticed, you see her name already popping up numerous times All the before time. the episodes. Um, yeah, because she, she's been on the staff for a while at this point. Like, she's helped uh, doing punch-up writing and, and all that good stuff. She's in the writer's room. Uh, but this will be the first script that she was actually the first pin on, essentially. So is she going to get on Get Vocal with us, a la Mike Reese? <laughs> oh god i hope not uh, i hope so i hope it works out better i'm gonna try real hard to make it work uh simply put that one might be an audio only episode it is what it is uh but uh it's gonna be an exciting season and something that i hope that we can we can work out and of course i've still got lots of degenerate uh comedian friends and lots of degenerate podcasting friends like bob here 
uh, who we'd love to have back on the show. And uh, we've got a lot of episodes to what's that? It's a good Twitter handle for Bob the Degenerate. Degeneration Bob. Yeah, I like it. Uh, but yeah, we will have more exciting guests on as well. Uh, hopefully, this new format is going to be wild. We're going to figure it out as we go. It's going to probably, I, I guarantee you, we're going to fuck up at least an episode or two. Uh, it's bound to happen eventually. But hey, it is what it is. So yeah, with that, days. Rich, um, I'm excited for the future, but let's take one more second to reflect on the past. Do you have anything else uh, that you or any of the resources that you have over there uh, want to say about season 10 before we uh, close the book and head on to the next chapter? Before the end of that chapter, I would like to I was say trying that to tie that in and I just never made it work right, but way to catch it. <laughs> I, I saw what you're trying to throw up there right in front of the goal in Rocket League. But <laughs> I, I just like I feel like I enjoyed season ten a little bit more than season nine. Um I feel like I mean I had a pretty easy time picking my top five, but I, I feel like there's still a lot of great episodes in there. And again, I've made it very clear with my segment that stuff that I use in everyday life that are from this season that I just did not realize how much of it was from this season. So I, I can't say that I'm like I could say I'm getting tired of the notes and the preparation. I can't imagine how you feel because you do that at times a million compared to what I do. But like, even with the way you feel about doing notes and stuff for the Simpsons in general, I still feel like the episodes are very, very funny and very, very enjoyable at this point in the series. So like, I mean, people, again, we talk about this on every spectacular, but you can't say that they're declining. You can't like it, it's, if you watch these episodes, even if you watch, episodes that aren't in our top fives there's still so much involved in each one there's still so much good fun humor in it so you can't say that it's declining yet uh, i i mean you can say anything you want you to say anything you want not, but yeah i, I get what you're saying fair, like it's, it's hard to make a, a sound argument for that case exactly but i very much enjoyed this season and uh looking forward to seeing what's going coming up ahead in season 11 I, I definitely agree with you on the season 11. I don't know if I enjoyed season 10 more than season nine. I definitely didn't feel like it declined though. I think we talked about it. If I were going to, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull this off with the backwards camera, but uh, if I were going to like draw a chart, like showing the quote unquote decline, if you will, it would be such a subtle decline from like season eight to 10, even like it's like, it's still holding so strong in my mind. And there's so many, so many good episodes uh, I look across the board too, and IMDb for the most part backs us up on that as well. Cause like, if you look at season 10 uh, and you just like look at all the ratings of the show, none of them really have like an unusual dip. Uh, I think the lowest rated uh, episode of the season is 7.0 and that's Sunday, Crunday, uh, Sun Sunday, Cruddy Sunday, which is an episode I absolutely love. Uh, and like the highest episode on this season, I want to say was like an 8.5, maybe 8.2. Uh, and that was mayor to the mob for what it's worth. Woo! So you were in tune with the, the general consensus, but even as you look on to like the next season there, I'll, I'll be honest, there are a couple of dips in there. There's something that dips into like a, a 6.4, I believe it is for, uh, Saddle Sword Galactica, which is uh, co commonly brought up on on message boards and uh, whatnot in Simpsons fandom. And then Faith Off has a 6.8. You see a couple of them that start to dip, but you're still seeing uh, high 7 and 8 point ratings on each individual episode of the show. And I agree with that for the most part so far. I think that it's done. I don't think IMD is perfect. IMDB is perfect, but I do think that they've done a relatively good job of kind of paint by numbers showing how the show is holding up. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's a good way. I, I always enjoy the IMD IMDB rating system. Cause it's pretty in tune with how I feel in most of the stuff that we watch. So, and they're a good source of information. So I'm going to adhere to their judgment on this. I don't like looking at the ratings of the episodes until after I've already seen them, but uh, I like it when we line up with stuff for sure. Uh with that, Rich, uh, next week we're doing a best darn everything for the very oh. first time. Do we know what we're talking about yet? Should we announce it or should we we wait because we don't know and we don't want to have to come up with it on the fly? 
Well, you kind of just sold us out there, so <laughs> we're not going to talk about it. Stay tuned but it'll be that. an exciting time, right? Yeah. Right. Not, well, we can talk about butts. <laughs> well, how about but in the meantime, you make sure to follow us online. Richie is at the Wiz underscore kid twenty three. Miles is at Mr. Most Days Off on every social media platform and in person. If you want to come <laughs> check him out, watch him stand up. And then you can follow our show, most importantly. That's at Best Darn Diddly. That's D I D D L Y. I did want to point out before we leave, Miles, I feel like since you've started writing, it's changed your perspective on this show in particular. And I think it's also influencing your top five a little bit, especially with like the Lisa gets an A and how you like the, the story about that. And I just didn't know if you had any comments on that or if you feel like it's changed your perspective at all. Maybe I had, I honestly hadn't considered it, but that is, is a curious idea that, uh, I, I would imagine I, I do think about things like as I'm looking at the script and whatnot from that light a lot more now. Interesting. Yeah. But Cool. Well, we'll have more in-depth conversation on stuff like that and, of course, still The Simpsons. Next week, we'll be back for the very first time to present Best Darn Everything. For now, that's the end of that chapter. And until next time, be cromulent to each other.